bunch of gamers, one channel, and tons of games. This must be Games and Me. This is the Review Club, episode 25 for May 22nd, 2009. I am my own worst enemy. Hey guys, welcome to the Review Club! So, we're winding down to Memorial Day weekend again, and uh, yeah, we're actually going to do a special episode come in the next coming weeks, or the next coming weekend, rather. Um, we're going to be talking about like what's going to be happening during the second half of 2009, because, you know, E3 is approaching, we're going to talk about like what, you know, what's going to be coming out. But this episode is going to be all about the reviews, as usual, so... I'm going to ask the group here what they've been playing. So let's start with you, Chris. What have you been playing? I'm uh, trying to finish up Persona 4. And I just went back into um, Wolverine to pick up some more achievements. Oh, you achievement whore. Yep. Damn straight. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened to Chrono Trigger? I still have it. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I at least want to finish Persona before I go get heavily back into Chrono Trigger. Cause, okay, that's um, a good answer. Because you're almost in the home stretch anyway, so that's good. Run, running three games at a time is terrible. It is terrible. <laughs> I mean, imagine the holidays. Jesus Christ. All right, how about you, Vanessa? What you been playing? Um, I've been doing some old games this week. I got Sonic Adventure, so I haven't <laughs> played that in a long time, playing it again and uh day of the tentacle Ooh. finally started playing that Oot. and i went back to fallout 3 because i really want to explode in a nuclear explosion at level 30 nice <laughs> all right how about you ck well i gave persona 4 a rest this week because i got totally totally into the director's cut of broken sword on the ds ah. and some phoenix right on the side okay cool and what are you gonna be talking about today Broken Scizord. Woohoo! <laughs> How about you, Mark? What you been playing? I'm continuing my exploration of iPhone games, uh, <laughs> namely Oregon Trail and Resident Evil Degeneration. I see. You you know that after we talked about Crystal Defenders, Square Enix released a sequel to Crystal Defenders. Yes, and I'm probably gonna have to check that out soon. <laughs> Okay, cool. As as for what I've been playing, I've been playing the hell out of Shin Megami Tensei Devil Summoner 2, which just came out this week. If you guys haven't seen the Unbox video, it's on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash gamesandme. That was an epic unboxing. And um, I have also been playing this little-known game called Lit for WiiWare, and I'm going to be talking about that today, so... All right, CK. So let's start with your review of Broken Sword. So how is this game? Broken Sword is an excellent adventure game. More so now with this director's cut, actually, than it was the first time. Uh, let me give you some background. I played a little bit, like a teensy bit of the PC version. I got fairly far into the Game Boy Advance version before I finally just got pissed off at having to do an adventure game with the D-pad. <laughs> And then I saw, you know, you were there at Best Buy last week. Wait a minute, they released it on the DS? It's a director's cut? Oh, I guess I'll give it a try. <laughs> so I did, and I definitely do not regret it. It's an amazing game. It's They managed to add a lot to the original title, just fleshing out some story elements, so I'll go into that later. And it's also a reminder to me of what 1112 should have been. <laughs> That's the impression I keep getting. It's like, oh, this is how they should have done it. Like, point by point, this is how they should have done it. Hmm. So, where do I begin? Let's go into some of the ways that uh, Broken Sword uh, is different with the director's cut. Uh, the biggest difference is the beginning and kind of a sprinkled throughout the game. You get a lot more information on uh, the female lead in the game, Nicole uh, Collard, or Nico, as she's called in this game. Like, uh, in the original version, the game started out with the... 
you know, George Staubart, the male lead, is at the cafe, sees the clown, there's an explosion, mm-hmm. it's like, WTF, mate, and then it's like trying to figure <laughs> out where this explosion came from, and it's just, I know you have a problem with this, and as I look back, I kind of have a problem with it, too. It's like, okay, well, what am I supposed to do? It's like, okay, there's an explosion, who the hell is this blonde guy that I'm controlling, what's supposed to be going on here? Right, there was absolutely no, not enough context, and to me, there, there wasn't enough motivation for me to play as George, like, suddenly, like, after being questioned by the police, like, suddenly, like, Oh, now I want to solve the case for myself. I'm like, yeah, because oh, really? all you learn about him in the first five minutes is that he's a law student. He's American. He's on Paris as a tourist. Yeah. And you're like, OK, well, I guess I'm supposed to care for him now. <laughs> but what they do now is that they start out with uh, Nico, who in the original, you met up with her a little later because she's taking photographs. But now, you know, you start out with her and she's on assignment. She's supposed to be meeting with this prominent politician. And then some shit goes down, and then some shocking plot revelations, some actual suspense, like mm-hmm. a tense moment, which shocked me. Because normally, adventure games are so slowly paced that you don't... You know, ironic for a game that's involved entirely around the story. You don't get as uh, caught into it or surprised as you would with a faster-paced game. I see. So, I mean, really well done, but then it all leads up to her deciding to go to that cafe, and then you see the explosion and the clown from her perspective. Mm -hmm. Then you go to the George section, and suddenly it makes a lot more sense. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of like I felt like it really fleshed out the story a lot more, because that was definitely something that needed to... Like needed to have been there from from the onset because like when Nico shows up, you're kind of like, okay, well, this girl, I'm, I guess I'm supposed to trust this girl, and you, you, it, they didn't give you enough kind of like to work with to try to you know because realistically, that American guy is not going to immediately trust Nico, and it, by it, by actually pr- providing that section in the very beginning, it kind of we're kind of almost like you know it's kind of like a, a movie type build up. Yeah, exactly. And they do a bunch of neat little tricks to make you start caring for this character right off the bat that you wouldn't get with George normally. Like, you see her apartment right from the get-go. You see that she's kind of living... She's not well off. You see that she's trying to get her big break. You start empathizing for her. You want her for this to be the story that makes her... And then, like, you get, like, the call from your editor and he wants to put the squish on this story. Again, I'm trying to be very careful here and not give spoilers, but you just have to take my word for it. It's a cool story. But I think, like, at lunchtime when we were talking about this, I think we came up to one particularly interesting um, conclusion in that we both don't like George Stobart. And that's exactly why when you start the old Broken Swords, you didn't feel closer. Yeah, because George Stobart is a douchebag, plain and simple. (laughs) He's like, you know, he's the type of guy where you suddenly realize why the French hate Americans a lot of the time. (laughs) Because he's just so clueless and, like, oafish, and he's all happy-go-lucky, and he doesn't take things seriously, and it doesn't work. But Nico is a great character. Like, this is one of the few times in a video game where you get a strong female lead who's not, who's, you know, the game isn't trying to sell you on her by showing off her body or anything. It's just mm-hmm. a genuinely well written character. Yeah. And that's another thing that I think this game benefits from with this director's cut is that the. Uh, the way that we do game narrative now has advanced significantly since the game first came out in 1995. Like, uh, we've got writers have gotten more sophisticated, and we are able to learn more cool stuff uh, about mm-hmm. them as opposed to. And speaking for the uh, about the DS too, it's kind of cool in because in the old PlayStation version, like you'd see like these animated cutscenes, and then. It's it's funny because you ha- you didn't have context to what was happening too. It was just okay. These are events happening with some you know really cool cartoonish animation. And then what they did for the DS is like the bottom screen would show the cartoon, and then on the top like it shows like George or somebody or somebody else like two other people talking to each other. And it's kind of like as if they're they're recalling the event. And if you didn't want to read that, you could just watch the screen down there and actually see like the actual event unfold. You know, exactly. Very eyes. And that's another thing. The animation in this game is great, especially for a DS game. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I I definitely want to recommend this game to story gamers. It's it's very well written uh, for an adventure game. It's pretty fast paced. It has some tense moments. 
like uh, kind of in a Gabriel Knight sort of way, but not as quite as reliant on the supernatural. It's very realistic without being like one 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 two, where it's almost. Well, Too I don't want to say realistic. Yeah, well, I want to say that, but on the other hand, the things that you're supposed some of the weird puzzles in one one two were so not realistic in their attempt to be realistic. Right. Again, I go back to writing down the safe code on your bathroom mirror. That's <laughs> that's going to go down in history for me as one of the lamest puzzles of all time. <laughs> but yeah, so story gamer, I also want to talk about the puzzles because there are some really good puzzles.